let's talk about what I think are the three most important ideas in programming that I've come across this far. So number one, business is the only thing that matters. In other words, we don't develop software for ourselves. We develop software for clients to solve actual existing problems. And software is only valuable if we actually solve a problem for an actual person. And in some sense, this is of course trivially obvious. Of course, the case is that we develop software for end users. We develop software for the, with the intent of somebody actually using them. But it's extremely easy to, get, to forget that and get stuck in the idea of that we're developing software for the sake of our own perfection or for the quotation marks beauty of the software that we're, devel we're developing. I mean, it's very easy as a programmer to get caught up in the idea that we want to make the software better, but we forget why we are trying to make the software better. So in other words, everything begins and ends with a requirement from the client. And just to make this super clear, for example, performance, uh, like the speed of execution of the application is another requirement. If there is no need to increase performance of the application, it's not a requirement. But of course, if clients actually demand that the software is performing better, if clients actually demand that the software is executing faster, then of course that is a requirement. Then of course that is something that we should do. But again, everything begins and ends with a requirement from an actual customer. The second point I want to raise is the question of E-type, P-type, and S-type systems. So I have a specific video on that. I'll link that in the description. So check it out if you're interested in that. But the point is that there's this dude called something something Lehman, sorry, I, I, sorry for forgetting his name, but so he argued that there are three types of systems. There are S-type systems, P-type systems, and E-type systems. And without digging into P-type and S-type systems, he's arguing that most of the time we are developing E-type systems. And what's special about these systems is that the requirements are in constant flux. In other words, we will never actually reach a point where we've specified the requirements to 100% because the requirements by their very nature is in constant flux. So in other words, the requirements keep changing as time moves by. And what's critical about these applications is that we're solving real problems for real human beings. Again, back to point number one, that actually solves a business problem, that actually solves something that has utility for some kind of consumer. So informally, I would say that 99% of the applications that we build are of this type of an application. It's, it's this kind of system, which means that 99% of the applications that we're building won't ever be quotation marks finished. There is, there is no way of actually identifying a point or getting to a point where we've specified all of the requirements of the system, implemented all of the requirements, and we have a quotation marks done system. I mean, with the whole notion of continuous delivery and agile and all of that stuff, it seems like we as a community, as a software community, we're, we, we are figuring out and most of us agree that software has to be delivered on a continuous basis. The days when you shipped, quotation marks shipped, signed off an application are, are, are long gone. But then again, I mean, I think it's important to still remind ourselves about this because I think we're underestimating the, the longevity of any particular software application. We're underestimating the lifetime, the time in which, under which an application will actually live and actually provide value. So in other words, what I'm saying is that software, when we approach software, we need to approach software with the, with the intent of maintaining that software forever. I saw a great tweet the other day that said something along the lines of that, pushing to production is not the first release, it's the first sketch or the first draft or something like that, or the first iteration. And I mean, that's, that's really a good point. It's, it's really a good way of putting it. Like, we are far from being done with the application. When we push the first version to production, we've created the first draft. We have a first version of the application, but the application we, we should intend, or I mean, it makes sense from a, from a business standpoint to keep the application over a long period of time. It makes sense to build an application as, as though we are going to be in business for a very long time. I mean, if we build an application only to ship it and then forget about it, why, why would we do that? Of course the app will be, become obsolete in a few weeks, a few months, a few years. Of course we should aim for the long term. Of course we should aim to build an application that we keep supporting and keep having clients and keep making money from over the long term. And to do that, we need to approach software in the same way we approach business. Or in other words, playing the long game rather than playing the short game. Instead of delivering software now and considering ourselves done, we think of our software as a service that we continuously provide to clients over a long period of time. But enough rambling about that, let's get to the third point. So the third point I want to talk about is the notion of not providing estimates. 
or hashtag no estimates. There are various opinions about this and, and I'm empathetic to the fact that a lot of people argue that in order to run any actual business, you need to supply estimates. You need to upwards in the chain of commands, you need to supply estimates of how long you think particular activities will take to perform. I mean, I'm empathetic in the sense that I respect their opinion, but I still don't actually think that you have to, necessarily have to provide estimates in order to run an actual business. If we think about the, the, the points number one and two, if we approach our business or if we approach our software as a business that will live for a very long time and we continuously develop and ship features to the clients that we've deemed the most prioritized features, why is it so important that we have to supply estimates? I mean, I assume the point is that we want to be able to do sort of a cost-benefit analysis. We need to be able to say, okay, is this feature more expensive to develop than this feature? And then we think about the utility that it provides for the end customer and then we choose one of them. So yeah, that makes sense. I mean, if you're going to do estimates for, for that reason, then at least do them relatively. Say this, this feature will be relatively more expensive than this other feature or vice versa, rather than this feature will take X amount of hours or weeks or whatever. So when I agree to the notion of no estimates, I, I should perhaps refine that and say that I agree to the notion of no estimates in terms of time where, or where time is the, the unit of measure. But of course, it's, it's kind of inevitable to measure sort of the complexity level so that we relatively com can compare different features. I'm still not entirely convinced that we absolutely, absolutely need to do this, but that's a separate discussion and I need to do some more thinking before I can really have a strong opinion on that. I, I, I'm not sure, but again, I, I'm not necessarily convinced. But the key point to remember from that third point is really that estimates are always wrong. And I guess regardless of whether we talk about them in terms of complexity or we talk about them in terms of uh, actual time, as in uh, where time is the, is the unit of measure, regardless, again, informally, in 99% of the cases, our estimates will be wrong and sometimes massively wrong. So whenever we can avoid to make estimates, definitely avoid to make estimates. I guess if we really take the, the really crucial part from that argument, that would be don't make promises based on estimates. So don't make promises where you say, yes, we will deliver this and this in that and that amount of time. It's really bound to fail. It's extremely unlikely that we will be able to deliver that on time. And I mean, to be perfectly honest, from my own perspective, it's really difficult to say no when seniors ask for estimates and, and that we make promises to deliver based on those estimates. But we have to collectively try to get away from this kind of thinking about developing software. We can't make reliable promises in terms of how quickly we will be able to develop a particular thing. So it's better that we rethink the way we develop software and actually base it around a much, much more iterative approach where we step-by-step step refine. And again, there's no need to think that that would be necessarily worse for business. But I'll stop here so that I won't start rambling too much about things that I don't actually know a lot about. Thank you super much for watching. I hope this made sense. Please shoot something in the comments if you agree or disagree. Remember to subscribe if you want more talks about programming. And I will see you in the next one.